Hello, in this video I'm going to be creating a mushroom wall in Substance Designer. And so I'm going to start by using a Polygon 2 node. And I'm going to use this pretty much to create the uh, form of the mushroom. And uh, I'm going to blend these two together. So that it becomes a little bit flatter. So this one's going to be a stylized material, of course, as usual. And uh, like I said, I'm going to use now a tile sampler. And I'm going to use a tile sampler to change the size of the original shape. This allows for a easier uh, to control sizing, to be able to control the sizing a lot easier. I'm also going to bevel this just to see what this looks like. I actually think this is giving me a better shape. And I'm going to use this pretty much to splatter across the surface to create a kind of like a mushroom wall type of thing. And this will be will be used as a wall piece, as a wall material pretty much. Obviously I'm using a tile sampler and I'm just going to randomize it a little bit. And connect it to the normal map as well. And I'm also going to add a little bit of a warp just to create a like a second mushroom here. Just so that there's a little bit of variation and they're not all the same. And obviously connect this to the ambient occlusion as well. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some uh, kind of like grass or leaves type of thing. And I'm going to use the waveform node, which is pretty much the same node I use pretty much every time for creating things like leaves or plants or stuff like that. This node works pretty well for that. For that. So I'm going to use that and obviously randomize it a little bit. And I'm going to use a histogram scan here to just create a mask where I don't want the uh, plants to show up. I will invert that. And I'm going to connect these two by using a height blend. And I want to also start to preview this as a height map on the material. So I connected it to the height map just to see what this looks like. And I'm also going to use this purling noise just to add more variation to the uh, randomness of the rotation. So that the rotation is just a little bit more random. It's not too uniform. And now I'm going to start to create or add colors. So I'm going to use a gradient map through a curvature smooth. And I'm going to start with the color of the mushroom and then the color of the, uh, the grass or the plants. And one thing I want to do is I want to start to add more color variation. So I want to mask the bottom of the mushroom so that it's a, like a lighter color. And then the top has that red uh, color as well. Because usually the mushrooms have like a lighter bottom and then the top has the uh, main color of them. So I used the light node for that through a normal map just to get the uh, the masking. And 
and I'm going to use a purling noise just to add also more color variation to the red uh, portion of the mushroom. I'm going to use that uh, purling noise as the mask. Just so that there are more details to this. Obviously this is stylized, but it's still good to add more details to, to the actual surface. And I'm going to use an edge detect so that those details have uh, like an outer edge to them. So now as you can see, now there's an edge to that just to add even more uh, interest to the texture. And because it's stylized, it makes it look like there's a bit more separation between the colors. And now what I want to do is I want to add more variation also to the bottom of the mushroom so that it's not completely flat. And for that, I'm just going to use the arc pavement node. And I'm going to use a normal map so that I can use that uh, with the combination of a light node and use this as a mask. And this is so that there's more surface change uh, for the bottom part. And I'm just going to test to see which blending mode works best for this. So I think this is looking pretty good for that. So I also want to add a little bit of color variance to the um, to the plants or grass. So I want the tips to be just a little bit brighter than everything else. Obviously this starts to look a little bit more like a painted light. Um, but in this case I think it looks pretty good. I think it works for this material. So the last thing I want to do is pretty much uh, update the uh, roughness map a little bit. And I'm going to keep the mushrooms mainly uh, shiny. And then the grass I want to keep it so that it's not very shiny at all, it's more opaque. So I think this works pretty well. And I'm keeping the roughness pretty, um, pretty much the same for the grass. It's not a lot of variation on it. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. This is what it looks like in Marmoset Toolbag. So if you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new to the channel and would like to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Do you want to learn how to use Substance Designer to create interesting materials which you can use to apply to things like environments or props? Well, in this Intro to Substance Designer tutorial, Anthony Carmona will walk you through the process on how to get started in making materials in Substance Designer. Click on the link below now to start learning how this is done.
Anthony will start you off by explaining the theory behind physically based rendering and from there he will show you the ropes to get started with the most useful notes found within Substance Designer. This is a perfect tutorial for anyone who is new to Substance and would like to learn how to get started. This tutorial also includes a bonus lesson where Anthony will show you how to present a material through lighting and rendering using Marmoset Toolbag. Hey, so this is a very short video ad, so there's not enough time to cover everything. Click on the link in the description now to get started.